respiratory failure is a common occurrence in, in, in sepsis and about 35% of individuals uh, develop some sort of mild to acute lung injury and 25% going on to the worst form which is the acute respiratory distress syndrome. In addition, 40% of the individuals with sepsis develop some sort of cardiac dysfunction. This affects the, the, the lungs um, considerably and at, at a site of inflammation there's an increase in the amount of neutrophils arriving at that site and in the case of acute lung injury the lungs fill up with cells and fluid, um, particularly due to the neutrophils, and these are there to, to kill bacteria, but in addition, if they get there in too many numbers, then they release a lot of materials that can also injure the tissue, and so you get the destruction of the normal uh, lung tissue. So many years ago, when I was set the task as a postdoc was to find what's recruiting neutrophils into the alveolar space. And we found at that time, this is probably about 20 years ago, we found a molecule called interleukin-8. Uh, we found that in normal patients it was in the lung, but in ARDS patients it was very high. The amount of uh, IL-8 that was in the lung corresponded to uh, the number of neutrophils that was in the lung. And also, in those patients with sepsis causing the lung injury, that there was a massive amount of this material uh, inside the alveolar space. So what we did was set out to find a material that could block the uh, neutrophils seeing this material so that they couldn't respond, they couldn't migrate, and they couldn't release these chemicals to destroy the lung. And what we found was a, um, a small peptide that uh, will inhibit the activity of IL-8, it won't allow the neutrophils to move into the site of inflammation, but specifically to IL-8, it didn't uh, react against other stimuli. We could also stop the neutrophils degranulating, releasing all these noxious chemicals, um, and in fact we needed 10 times more of this peptide to stop the neutrophils arriving in the site of inflammation than we needed to degranulate. So we can titrate the material so that we can allow neutrophils to come in, to scarf up the bacteria, but not to degranulate un inappropriately and start destroying the, the lungs. And what we found was if we have a bacterial infection in the lung, we get a big increase in neutrophils, um, peaking at about 12 hours. But if we give this material that we've designed, those neutrophils don't come in. The, the response is much less. In addition, although macrophages can't smell, can't see, can't recognize IL-8, they come in at uh, about 12 hours, peaking at about 48 hours. But if we don't allow the neutrophils to come into this site, the macrophages don't then follow, so we can stop the overall uh, cycle of this um, injury. We've shown that it's uh, useful in bacterial infections. We've shown it's useful in um, other forms of acute lung injury. This is a uh, very normal looking lung. In fact, an animal has been treated with bleomycin down into the lung. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like if we stop the neutrophils coming in. It's m open and in less injured. In trauma and sepsis, such as a road traffic accident and then followed by a septic event, uh, we can again prevent the, the lung injury. We've also used it in other situations such as uh, acute re rejection um, in lung transplantation. Uh, this is the transplanted lung. If we've used, uh, stop the neutrophils coming into the lung, this is the transplanted lung if we don't stop the neutrophils coming into the lung. So we've been able to show that it's, uh, if we block the neutrophils, we don't get acute lung injury.